very grateful and very humble when I got the call to ask to teach today because I'm a teacher. And normally teachers teach in groups at Ladies Affairs. So when Sister Charmaine called and he was talking and I was listening intensely, what I was listening for was the name of who else <laughs> is going to be here today besides <laughs> me. Well, after a few moments, the light bulb came on <laughs> and I realized that it was going to be me. So what I did was what every sister does when they're in need of support. The ladies of the inner city church of Christ, please stand up. Right. We need some 
something we can depend on. Yes. And we know what that is. That's the gift that we've been given. That wonderful book of his word. Amen. The standard that doesn't change. Right. The beautiful mind of Christ. That all we have to do is open up the page. Yes. Amen. I'm going to stop for a minute. You know, I love the Bible. Mm, amen. I'm in a bookstore because I love to read. Amen. And when we sit in our classroom and teach our children and other ladies, teach them how beautiful it is to read the Bible yes. in its context. Mm -hmm. Not to just search for a scripture, but to and turn to any page. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And God saw the light, it was good, and God divided it, the light from the darkness. That's the division. Mm -hmm. In the whole context of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Not searching for one scripture. Now we're going to study the scripture today. We're going to study it because I was assigned the scripture to study. <laughs> but when you Look at Proverbs 14, 12. Know that there are verses above and verses below. Yes. And that's the way you study the word of God. The Bible urges us to develop such virtues as responsibility, honesty, loyalty, faithfulness, and love. When you are reading the teachings of Christ, okay, we're having Destruction. 
Shaul. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is one of the most popular and familiar passages quoted from the book of the Bible. But how often do we take the time to study it? Right. Have we ever just sat down with this passage to study it? what it truly means? Some choices bring physical death. Consider David's son, Anna. Thought it right to rape his sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A way that seems right to a man. Absalom thought it was right to steal his father's kingdom. Mm -hmm. He died. And some choices, although they don't give us a physical death, cause spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Some, Samson, thought it right to date an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. They left him blind and destroyed. Mm -hmm. Rabbi thought it right to prepare for the younger council. You know what he did. He made the taxes higher to work harder in a time of prosperity. And he lost the 10 tribes. The second point I want to make today is man is not the highest surveyor of life. We think we are. Mm -hmm. We think we know everything. Mm -hmm. But man, as we showed before, sees by appearance. At inner city, we never know who's coming through the door, mm -hmm. and we're grateful for it. Amen. We don't know how they're going to look, how they're going to smell. Right. Mm -hmm. But we are happy to came through the door. Amen. Amen. Our seats have no one's name on them. Amen. And I know the same is true of the ear. Right. It's just we have such a different opportunity yes. because of where we're located. Man has a limited knowledge of the past. God has the perfect view of the past and the beginning. <coughs> Jesus said, in the beginning was God. Mm -hmm. Man has a limited knowledge of the future. God has what the Bible calls foreknowledge. Yes. Man can be affected by prejudice, selfishness, ulterior motives. God is perfectly impartial and just in all of his judgments. Man can be blinded by passion and self will. Man can be tempted. These things don't have to be God. Where's the real benefit of all things? Point number two. The human perspective as opposed to the divine perspective. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel and he was instructed to say, you cannot distinguish between holy and unholy. This makes it clear that man is not the highest surveyor of Amen. life. Amen. Jeremiah 10, 23 says the same thing. It is not in the way, it is not in man that walk to direct his own steps. Amen. Point number three. And I'm only going to make four points today. Then the lesson is yours. Sincerity does not stop consequence. We start down this pathway, and you heard it. The Lord knows my heart. <laughs> but Saul thought his heart was right. Yes. Yes. As he persecuted the church. Yes. And you want to read about it from 1 Corinthians 15. But after Saul became Paul, the consequence of his life was Saul. Right. Your friends who knew him when they hang out at the, at the bar, at the club, or whatever, they still are going to hang on to you. Yes. <laughs> they still are going to test you every Sunday to say, yeah. Don't you want to go to the half hour? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> No matter how sincere you are, 
stage you are now, <coughs> life still has consequences. Yes. Amen. So what do we do about that? And you know, I have walked so far away from my notes, and Sister Mag told me that. <laughs> I want to go back now about talking about sincerity and consequences. I want to make it a little room more real. I own a bookstore, as you know. And I had a friend of mine who took all her retirement money. And she was very good at making beautiful jewelry. Beautiful jewelry was beautiful. All the sisters and the ladies said, all you need to go into your own business. Everything is great. You know, take all of your money and buy your product. Well, the sister did that, and she was very confused. She was sure, she was confident, she had the gift. There was no reason why she should prosper. Mm -hmm. And she went to the Ladies National, where there were 2,000 ladies and 35 other vendors who sold jewelry. Uh -oh. Well, she wasn't, she didn't do that well at that time because. You never know. Even with the best intentions, even with the greatest confidence, what the Lord has in store for you. And what she learned that time was having the best, having a great display, does not make you a sale. <laughs> Read John 5, 
says the first teachers, teach your children. Amen. Teach your friends' children. Teach your nieces and nephews. Teach the next generation. We sisters have such a magnificent job. I know the brothers preach on the but you're there from the time they wake up in the morning to the time they go to bed. Even when they play football, they say, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> if they're not your child, that doesn't matter. Or in your road, where our other location is, when I look out, there's so many children. I said to my husband, that's why we stay here. Right. It's not about how ready our building is. Amen. It's not about whether we have so much changes. It's about that generation. That needs to know God. Yeah. I am so blessed that at our home there are four generations, three generations of women who have been added to the body. Amen. Myself, my daughter, and my granddaughter. And my granddaughter, my oldest, is 18. And she brings people to worship service. Amen. Amen. There's no other thing to say. And that's just, that's our job. Amen. Amen. That's our call. Yes. Open your gift of the Holy Spirit. Open your gift of your womb. Service we have over the world. Amen. 